Hello and very warm welcome to this edition of Question Hour from Parliament House Complex, where we bring you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Rajya Sabha and the answers given by the government. I'm Kriti Mishra, and joining me is my colleague Vishal Haya. Well, thank you, Kriti. And there are some very interesting questions asked by the members uh, today as well, and their answers uh, given by the government are uh, equally to the point and factual. Let us take you through some of these questions, Kriti. Let's begin with the first one. So the first question has been asked by member K Ravinder Kumar and he has asked the government whether it has undertaken any study regarding inordinate delay in induction of several aircrafts into the forces including Tejas. Well the defense ministry has uh, given a detailed answer to this question wherein it says that uh, the aeronautical development agency that is ADA has undertaken a study to identify the reasons for delay in development of light combat aircraft that is LCA Specific reasons for the delay were analyzed and corrective actions undertaken to accelerate the LCA program. Now, the LCA had attained initial operational clearance, that is IOC, in December 2013 and final operational clearance on 20th of February 2019. The Ministry further says uh, that the process of induction has been accelerated through an enhanced rate of production at HAL from 8 aircrafts per year to 16 aircrafts per year. The LCA was inducted on 1st of July 2016 in the Indian Air Force and the aircraft is being operated by the pilots of Indian Air Force. Well, the next question is to the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change and Forests and this one has been asked by three members of the Upper House, Vishambar Prasad Nishad, Sukhram Singh Yadav and Chaya Varma. All three of them have sought from the Ministry the answer to the mechanism in the country for compensating farmers whose crops have been damaged by stray wild animals or cattle. The government says that mechanism for providing compensation to the farmers for crop losses caused by wild animals varies from state to state. The government further goes on to say that the extent of crops of the farmers damaged by wild animals and cattle every year are not collated in the ministry. However, the ministry provides financial assistance to states and union territories under the centrally sponsored schemes of integrated development of wildlife habitats, Project Tiger and Project Elephant for management of wildlife and its habitations in the country. It includes compensation for depredation of wild animals including cattle lifting, crop damage, loss of life and property. The activities supported under the schemes include construction, erection of physical barriers such as barbed wire fence, solar powered electric fence, biofencing using cactus, boundary walls etc. to prevent the entry of wild animals into crop fields to reduce the entry of animals from forests to habitations and setting up of anti-depredation squads for drive away problematic animals. State governments also provide relief from their own funds for damage to crops by wild animals. The ministry has recently increased the ex gratia payment in connection with wildlife depredation like death or permanent incapacitation to rupees 5 lakh, grievous injury to rupees 2 lakh, minor injury and cost of treatment up to 25,000 per person and loss of property, crop or state or union government may adhere to the cost norms prescribed in them. Well, in fact, one of the members who asked this question, Mr. Vishambar Prasad Nishad, did speak to my colleague Kriti Mishra on his response to the answer given by the government to the question raised by him. And joining is member of Rajya Sabha, Mr. Vishambar Prasad Nishat on our show. Welcome to Rajya Sabha Television, sir. You have asked a very important question that the animals are damaged by the animals. How does the government give a lot of compensation for this? The government has given a lot of questions. How important is this? Look, whether it is the Raja government or the Kendra government, the question was that the animals are damaged by the animals, who will do the animals? 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 अगर नुकसान होता है तो फसल बीमा पे उसका मुआवजा मिले लेकिन सरकार ने फसल बीमा की सही नीति नहीं अभी तक लागू की जिन लोगों ने लोन ले रखा है उन्हीं को केवल फसल बीमा से कवरेज कवर किया है बाकी जो इंडिविजुअल किसान अगर कोई भी फसल बीमा कराना चाहता है उसके लिए कोई व्यवस्था केंद्र सरकार प्रदेश सरकार प्रदेश सरकारों के पास नहीं है ये केवल अभी कागजों पे चल रहा है और बीमा कंपनियों जो फसल बीमा कंपनियां हैं उनको फायदा हो रहा किसान कोई फायदा नहीं हो रहा 
तो हमारा सवाल ये था सीधे कि किसान को जो पशुओं से होने वाली हानि है उसको भरपाई कैसे करेगी तो केंद्र सरकार राज्य सरकार के ऊपर करे राज्य सरकार कहती है हमारे पास कोई ऐसा साधन नहीं Moving on to the next question and this one has been asked by member Saroj Pandey and she has asked the court ministry whether it has formulated any plan to increase the production and consumption of coal in India. Well the ministry in its answer says that there has been a consistent effort to increase the domestic coal production and uh, it gives the data when it says that the all India raw coal production has increased from 565.77 metric tons in 2013-14 to 730.35 metric tons in 2018-19 now the 2018-19 figures are provisional absolute increase in all india coal production from 2013-14 to 2018-19 is 164.58 metric tons as compared to an increase of coal production of 73.01 metric ton between 2008-9 and 2013-14 the ministry further says that the current year that is 2019-20 All India coal production was 113.24 metric tons with a growth rate of 2.4%. Coal is consumed by sectors using coal as intermediary and the government has no role in increasing the consumption of coal. In order to augment supply a total of 84 coal blocks has been allocated under special provisions act 2015 so far. Further, the focus of the government is on increasing the domestic production of coal which includes pursuing with the state government for assistance in land acquisition and coordinated efforts with the railways for the movement of coal well the next question is again to the ministry of environment climate change and forests and this one is from member sp ramaswamy and uh, she asked the government uh, whether it has taken any action against industries with respect to effluent discharge standards and for non compliance under the water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974 and the Environment Protection Act 1986 during the last 3 years. The government goes on to say that Central Pollution Control Board is monitoring and inspecting industrial units based on alerts generated from online continuous effluent emission monitoring system and taking appropriate action against non-complying industries as per the provisions of the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981 and the Environment Protection Act 1986 During 2016-17 CPCB started a scheme of inspection of 17 categories of highly polluting industries based on the computer generated alerts Industries for inspection are selected on the basis of short message service alerts generated from the online monitoring system A total of 592 industries have been inspected between 2016 and 17 and 347 directions issued under sections 5 of environment protection act 1986 to non complying industries and one direction issued under section 181b of the air and water acts to state pollution control board the next question is to the ministry of heavy industries and public enterprises and this question has been asked by member kc ram murthy and he has asked the government whether the government has made any findings on the countries that are giving subsidy for electric vehicles including those owned by private people and whether the government is now proposing to withdraw subsidy to private electric four wheelers well the ministry in its answer says that uh, based on outcome and experience gained during the phase 1 of faster adoption and manufacturing of uh, hybrid and electric vehicles in india that is fame india scheme and after having consultations with all stakeholders including industry and industry associations department of heavy industry has finalized and accordingly notified the phase 2 of fame india scheme on 8th of march 2019 which is for a period of 3 years commencing from 1st of april 2019 keeping impact of electric vehicles on reduction of fossil fuel and environment pollution this phase of scheme is mainly focused for public and shared transportation except e2 wheelers where privately owned two wheelers are also being supported through incentives well the next question is to the ministry of jal shakti and this one has been asked by the member pl punya who goes on to ask the government 
about the details of the problems being faced in river linking project along with the total cost of the project. Also, he wants to know the details of the number of people who would be displaced by the said project and the agriculture and forest land in hectares which will be lost due to the project. Mr. Punya also wants to know from the government whether it has undertaken any study in Indian scenario in the light of ill effects of the river linking project. The government has given a very elaborate answer here and the government goes on to say that National Perspective Plan was prepared by the Ministry of Irrigation, now Ministry of Jal Shakti in August 1980 for water resources development through inter-basin transfer of water for transferring water from water surplus basins to water deficit basins. Under the NPP, the National Water Development Agency has identified 30 links, 16 under peninsular component and 14 under Himalayan component for preparation of feasibility report. The main problems in river linking project relate to lack of consensus or agreements amongst the state concerned for water sharing and implementation mechanism. The total cost of the interlinking projects as estimated in the preliminary studies of pre-feasibility feasibility stage is 5.60 lakh crore at 2002 price level. Subsequently, the group on financial aspects for interlinking of river projects and the task force for ILR are estimated the total cost of ILR projects under NPP at 8.44 lakh crore rupees at 2015-16 price level. However, the total expenditure likely to be incurred on ILR projects can only be known after completion of all individual detailed project reports. Moving on to the next question and this question is to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting and has been asked by member Sayed Nasir Hussain and he has asked whether the government is going to curb the practice of surrogate advertisement on television. Well, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting in its answer says that advertisements telecast on private satellite TV channels are regulated in accordance with the advertising code prescribed in the Cable Television Network's Regulation Act 1995 and the rules framed thereunder. As per Rule 728A of the Advertising Code, it provides that no advertisement shall be permitted which promotes directly or indirectly production, sale or consumption of cigarettes, tobacco products, wine, alcohol, liquor or other intoxicants. However, a product that uses a brand name or logo which is also used for cigarettes, tobacco products, wine, alcohol, liquor or other intoxicants may be advertised on cable service subject to certain conditions including certificate of the advertisement by the Central Board of Film Certification. The Ministry further says that complaints with regard to advertisements are handled by Advertising Standards Council of India that is ASCI, a self-regulatory organization and action is taken against the violators when they are found. So these were the important questions and answers in today's edition of Question R. For Prashnakal with our colleagues Arvind Singh and Preeti Singh after the break, stay tuned.